What's going on everybody? I have a bit of an interesting review for you today. Today I'm going to be talking about the KWA Chris Vector. And the reason this one's so interesting is because I wasn't expecting to review it. Basically here's what happened. If anyone's familiar with Airsoft GI's mystery boxes, a friend and I each bought a mystery box, knowing that whatever we got, we were going to be pretty gentlemanly about it and like be open to trading with each other and just kind of Basically, we were just going to get two guns and then divide up whatever we got, depending on, you know, who needed what more. Maybe he needed a, a better long-range gun, maybe I did. We were just going to talk about it when the two guns got there. Uh, and on the off chance that we won the Battlestar ticket, which consisted of four guns, we were going to divide them up straight down the middle instead of just one person getting all four. Well, that's what happened. We freaking won it. Uh, and if you don't believe me, there's a KWA M4 sitting over there, which you'll see a review coming shortly for. And he ended up with the ICS Galil and the spring shotgun and the other um, mystery box item which came by itself, which was a P90. I can't remember the exact name of it. But he's going to be joining me in a few weeks, and you'll be seeing reviews of those three guns as well. So, this is one of the ones that I ended up with. And I have no idea how I feel about this thing still. I, I honestly feel my, uh, my fondness for this gun is probably mostly due to the fact that I got it and a KWA M4 for about 150 bucks. Yeah. Uh, but, with that said, I do actually have quite a few notes about this gun, both positive and negative. Let's start with the negative. Okay, when I actually first got this gun, it didn't work. The mag was basically a $50 paperweight in its current condition. Um, now, for those of you who've used gas guns, when you put gas in the bottom, what's supposed to happen to it? Is it supposed to stay inside the magazine, or is it supposed to just immediately shoot out the top? It's supposed to stay in the mag, and it didn't stay in the mag. Basically, gas goes in the bottom, and a giant jet of it uh, ejected out the top. And if you can look in there, I believe that's, I'm, I'm going to say right now, I don't know as much about gas guns as I should. I think that's the, uh, I'm just going to call that the nozzle. I know it's probably not the nozzle. Um, or the valve. It's a nozzle or a valve. It's something. You know, someone please correct me on that. Basically, that was stuck in place. And I had a friend of mine um, work on it, and now it actually. It actually works just fine. You got it back in a working order. Basically, a uh, piece of the valve was crooked because there was like a jagged piece of metal that was just left over from the molding or something and that was keeping it from sticking out all the way. So, um, I don't know if that's a widespread issue or if this was just a really weird freak accident. Um, I did contact Airsoft GI and they told me to uh, contact KWA. So, I'm pretty sure the situation would have been dealt with just fine, especially because in the box itself, uh, it actually came with basically the uh, the uh, paperwork for a warranty. So I'm pretty sure if he hadn't fixed this, they would have just sent me a new mag, and all would have been fine. So that being said, I mean, it's just something that I feel like I need to uh, make a note of is the fact that it actually basically came not usable. That's not the only issue I have with this gun. The mag release, for some weird reason, is up here. Now that's not KWA's fault, it's the exact same thing on the real steel version. Now, let me demonstrate. When you put in a mag, you know, it's fine. Goes in great. First of all, I gotta say this, uh, this gun feels amazing, and putting the mag in is no exception. It also feels amazing. But, when you want to get the mag out, you gotta reach up to the button, which is up there. It's not horrible, it's just inconvenient. And as soon as you pick this up, you're going to know exactly what I mean. You know, mag goes in fine, and when you want to switch, you got to either have your thumb up there or your pointer finger, and it just makes, it makes retrieving the mag cumbersome and awkward, and I absolutely hate it. And it doesn't matter which handguard you're using, because basically the front of the mag wall works great for a and guard as does adding a foregrip, which it comes with. It comes with this fantastic foregrip. I'll get to that in the positives. But anyways, it doesn't matter which one you're using, uh, the, mat, the mag release is just cumbersome and awkward. I almost feel like it was designed 
for you're using the foregrip and you just reach back with your thumb and the mag drops out. You're not going to be doing that in airsoft. Not when these things cost you about 45 bucks a piece and you, they are the sole reason for making your gun work. You break standard armlet mag for an, a, for an M4 AEG, pff, let's come in a box of 10 for 50 bucks. You're fine. Plus, your gun still works just fine. If you break a mag anyways, you just get another mag. Anyways, that is my biggest gripe with this gun, and just let me demonstrate. Let me pull up my handy friend here, the UMP. Say you're going, you know, you're, you're firing, you're firing, you want the mag out. It's quick, it's clean, little mag release behind the mag, and I can demonstrate this on a number of guns. Mag releases are fantastic on so many. This one is horrible. It is probably my biggest gripe with this gun is the fact that this mag release is in a shit position. Now, next gripe is the adjustable stock. It's cool that it's adjustable, don't get me wrong, it's just the fact that it's adjustable with an Allen key. Yeah, you need a frickin' Allen key to adjust the, this stock. Meaning that in the middle of a game, if you want this longer or if you already have it out shorter, you need to have Allen keys on you. And it's not the it's not the most um, obscure size. It's actually pretty common. I think like three of the sets that I have have this size. So you're going to be able to adjust it, no problem. It's just the fact that it requires an Allen key in general. Also, if the uh, adjustable stock is all the way in and you have it folded, it makes using the handguard in front of the magwell really cumbersome. And if you have the adjustable stock all the way out, it makes using the foregrip a little bit cumbersome. You can't have both, and I don't really understand that rationale. Now, that might change if you uh, get a foregrip which is a little bit farther forward. It's just that this foregrip feels great, and it's it just feels like something which was designed specifically for this gun, and I don't think I'll even ever take this off. Uh, that actually might be where most of my gripes end with this gun. I haven't tried disassembling it yet, that's going to come later, and I'm going to have a video for that. Uh, let's start with the positives. The iron sights are amazing, and if, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I'm an iron sight snob, and these are fantastic. They are flip up, both front and rear. There is a button, which you press on the left side to pull them down, and to pull them up, you just pull them up, and they feel amazing. They're solid. They are adjustable, which I don't know how many people actually take advantage of that, but they are adjustable if you do want that. Um, just very sturdy, very functional. I love them, and I think they did a great job with those. Um, <laughs> but that being said, this entire gun feels durable. It feels really, really heavy for something, for a submachine gun, basically. It just, it feels so sturdy and durable, and I feel like I could just drop this gun. I'm not going to, but I feel like I could and it would be fine. Uh, next, uh, I do really, really like the fact that the safety and the firing selector are two separate things, and I actually didn't even need to flip that around because it's ambidextrous, it's on both sides, which is another positive. So, yeah, you've got your safety and your um, non-safety, I guess. Uh, let me go ahead and take this out. <sighs> Anyways, those are right next to the trigger. They feel great. You know, they're not in the way. They're not cumbersome. Uh, they they feel sturdy. When you push it forward, you start to push it. It goes the rest of the way on its own, and that just it feels really well put together. Now, here's something that I didn't actually know was on the Chris until I got it in my hands. There is semi-auto, two-round burst, and full auto, which, ugh. Yeah, that is another little minor complaint is the firing selector is a little stiff, but you can just loosen that. Anyways, two round burst. Holy crap, that's awesome. I can't recall if there's any other gun that has that. If there is, please let me know. But it works. Oh god, it works. And it works well. I actually have a game coming up on the 19th, and I'm going to field this for the first time there, and I'm going to mostly be using on two round burst because it's perfect. Uh, especially for the magazine size only being about, I think it's 46. Two-round burst is perfect for that. Uh, that's, that is another really, really big gripe. Not with, not with this gun, but just kind of the idea of this gun. It's 
really limiting. And what I mean by that is, for the price you're paying, 364 bucks, uh, and on top of that, about 46 bucks for each additional mag. That is really limiting for your uh, for your ammo capacity and for your budget. If you, let's say you have a budget of about 400 bucks, which I mean, if you're a starting player, that's a pretty damn good budget to start with. You're probably going to get this gun and an extra mag. And um, let's just go ahead and compare that to a starting loadout for, say, just a basic AEG. Let's say you're going to get, oh, um, a JG AKS 7 for you. That's probably going to run you about, what, 160 bucks, Something like that. Um, and then if you wanted to throw in a box of King Arms mags, I think you get like five or six of those, and that's another 50 bucks. Uh, yeah, you already got a full loadout, and you're only at 200 bucks. So extra battery, 20 bucks. Um, yeah, I can keep building a loadout and go up to 400 bucks, and you'd be, you'd be set for a long time. This gun, however, this is really going to set you back quick. So, who I could recommend this to? <sighs> um, that's the biggest problem. I don't know. I mean, if I had to think of someone who I could recommend this to. Probably a sniper. I think this would be just something fantastic for a sniper to have as a sidearm. You know, something uh, just quick and you can pull out. I mean, it's it's cumbersome. I mean, it's, I think it's a little bit more cumbersome than like an MP7 or MP9. But I do think it is just a little bit... I think it definitely has that wow factor, first of all. I think this gun just really stands out. But I also feel like it's just going to be a little bit more accurate than the MP7 or an MP9. To me, the MP7, it's a cool gun. It just... it's. There's something about it. It's like the way the handle is almost kind of like curved forward, if that makes sense. That's just kind of how it feels in my hands. MP9, it's it's just okay to me. And then this just to me feels a lot more usable. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe. I think once you actually feel this gun, you'll know what I mean. Um, like it, it just feels so much more ergonomic, and this the uh, stock just sits right up against your shoulder. When you bring your head down, your cheek just sits right in eye level with these iron sights. It's perfectly designed. Um, also a lovely little feature I love about this gun is the fact that the bolt um, folds up nicely against the gun when you want to pull it back. Rack it back like that and you're good to go. Couldn't be simpler. And another little thing which is something they translated from the real steel really well is the fact that when you pull the bolt back, like when you just essentially open it I guess, but instead of pulling it all the way back when you do that, if you look inside the breech, you can actually see if a round is chambered or not. That is a fantastic feature, and I feel so spoiled having that, and I really wish a lot more guns could have that. Um, but that's... Yeah, I think the biggest issue with this gun is the price and um, trying to use it as a primary weapon. You know, the, the barrel length isn't that great. Um, so, uh, getting it to shoot really long range, I mean... This gun has a really high FPS of about 370 to 380, and that's pretty damn good for, for a fieldable primary weapon. However, you know, with a barrel length of about that, uh, that's not really something comparable to, say, something you'd find in an M4 or an AK. Uh, but I think, this, I think this thing probably would be a fantastic addition to a sniper's loadout as something to throw on his hip or his back. Um... But, again, this was not something I was expecting to review. Uh, another little side note, I do have to point out the fact that it comes with a barrel thread cover right there, which is on there. However, the threads are painted orange, and the paint is actually so big that you can't get the barrel cover on. So, uh, be advised of that. What I had to do was contact a friend who had some... Um, paint thinner, I guess it was, on hand, or acetone, and he got rid of that for me and threw that on there. So, now it is uh, a hell of a lot more appealing than just exposed orange threads. Um, by the way, check your local areas to see if you're allowed to do that. I know here in Oregon, you know, you can have guns without orange tips, so long as you're not shipping them. That's the only uh, basis for needing orange tips. You can have guns without them just fine. So, check with your local areas if you want to if you are interested in uh, removing orange tips. Uh, quick other little features, you know, it does have a sling mount right here attached to the base of the stock and the base of the receiver. Uh, there's another hole for a sling mount in the stock. Um, I think it just definitely 
adds to the versatility of this gun, being able to throw it on your back or something like that, or on your hip. I have seen people actually running with these on their hips as sidearms at games, but they were clanking around and flopping around and didn't exactly make them the most um, usable sidearms in history. But that is pretty much my first impressions of the KWA Chris Vector. I will throw up some, uh, some firing videos so you can see what it's like uh, in the daytime with some bullets and gas actually in this thing, and I will go ahead and get to the disassembly of this thing so you can see what it looks like on the inside. Thanks very much for watching, and catch you guys later.